<laughs> but my favorite object is this one. I was working with a dealer in New York who would send me images of sarcophaguses that were up for auction. And they were always a little bit too colorful and they always kind of looked a little fake to me. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about someone who is an icon, who is a legend, who is a groundbreaker in the fashion industry. Of course, we're talking about Rick Owens. Rick Owens was born in 1961. In 2004, he partnered with his wife, Michelle Lamy, owner of the Lamy Sportswear brand, to create a fashion company called Owens Corp, where he describes their partnership as asking a gypsy to organize a war with a fascist. He's most known for his avant-garde fashion shows and his bold use of color, ranging all the way from white to black and covering almost nothing in between. Today, we're going to take a gander at his enchanting Concordia, Italy home and hopefully get a peek into the mind of a genius. I Vogue, I'm Rick Owens, and this is my place in Concordia, Italy. My factory is across the street and this is where I come to do my collections. In this space, I don't like living with a lot of things. I'm not very acquisitive, but the things that I do live with are very special to me and I'm gonna show you around. Okay, so we're starting really, really strong here. Um, this living room setup looks like it could have been ripped straight from a Reddit post on r slash male living spaces. This looks like the most uncomfortable living room setup I could possibly imagine. We've got the backless chair, so you're constantly hunched over. And of course, the chair's not gonna be directly in front of the TV. No, it's gonna be kind of off to the side, so you have to crane your neck at this 45 degree angle to get a glimpse of the screen. Really good for an old man. Um, it's kind of just the perfect setup for a 62 year old man living a life of extreme luxury just to remember what it feels like to struggle, you know? Just to, just to feel it again, or maybe for the first time. Also, he's so close to the TV. I guess this is just how old men get their iPad baby time. As we will see throughout the video, he seems kind of enamored with this idea of being in an uncomfortable space, but you would think that would mean something more like having like a 13 inch Toshiba that's all the way across the room that you have to squint to see. But instead he decided to go for the 75 inch Samsung four inches from his face. Um, I guess it's kind of equally uncomfortable in the opposite way, but it is just a good example of what like a multi-millionaire thinks it's like to struggle. Oh wow, the human skull with the two molars. This is, this is starting to get a bit dark already. I want you to think about how different this video would be if I just changed the score a little bit. Like, we go from this pretentious tour of a museum to- It puts the lotion on its skin. Just a few short moments. It's, it's really quite remarkable. It's called Kneeling Youth. It's about introversion, introspection, narcissism. Well, this is my interpretation. It's kind of severe and a little bit maudlin, a little bit melancholy, but also vaguely spiritual. Oh my God, he has so many words to describe this statue. I just know his ass has been sat up late at night, many nights just straight contemplating the orb. His ideal Friday night, a little bump of K, put on soothing cave sounds and just get lost in the kneeling youth. <laughs> sounds like a good night to me. Uh, count me in. Uh, one for me, please. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Focused on creating. This is a period of rigor and this is a period of training and the gym takes up pretty much half the apartment. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That gym, absolutely exquisite. The way the sunlight comes in, the equipment, the layout, no notes, best room in the house by far. I'm calling it right now, best room in the house, yeah. I've always insulated and upholstered my spaces with army blankets, vintage army blankets. This is 
inspired by Joseph Boys. And he used army blankets as a symbol of protection and insulation and isolation. Yes, I love the ultra rich person cosplay of struggle. Like sure, he could easily afford a luxury eight by 10 rug or even just a shitty Amazon eight by 10 rug, but no. Instead, he chooses bravely, I might add, to scrounge together about 10 army surplus rugs, which aesthetically looks absolutely abysmal, by the way, and cover his floor in them to symbolize protection, protection insulation, insulation, and isolation. isolation. I'm not really sure what he thinks he needs to protect himself from. Maybe the laborers at the factory right next door from his house uh, rebelling and stealing his kneeling youth? Or maybe simply protecting himself from admitting that he is extravagantly wealthy and simply choosing to enjoy a little bit of physical comfort. Either way, the result is stunning. That's my closet. I don't have very many clothes. That's a little stack of t-shirts, a little stack of shorts for here, for the factory, for every day. Hold on. Okay, this is one of my biggest issues with this whole video. This man has a closet with five pairs of the same black shorts, eight pairs of black socks, and maybe two t-shirts? How can we take fashion advice from someone who dresses like a default character in Tony Hawk Pro Skater? I mean, sure, he's got drip, he's got swag, but you can't just have one look. Wearing the same outfit every day for five years only works if you're Timmy Turner, or a nudist. So when I pick an outfit, I'll pretty much stick to it for a couple of years. Hold on now, does that have say cunty behind his head yes you better work dracula because you know he kind of he kind of looks like dracula i don't know he looks like someone and i i need to think about it i need to cook on this one just give me a minute i'm i'm gonna think of who it is i'm gonna think of who it is gradually changes over the years every collection i just have the way he stares unblinkingly into the soul of the camera is deeply unsettling like are we falling in love or are you going to eat my firstborn son? Because either one is fine. I just like to set my expectations accordingly. I like the classical tone of travertine interior sets. I like putting myself into that zone. I might have overdone it. I put travertine everywhere I could. I know that I wanted to live in stone. I'm glad that he can admit that he might have overdone it a little bit here. I mean, yes, it's beautiful, but it also looks like he's living out his fantasy of being the- Listen, I gave- I've always been impressed by the skulls in Italian churches. This skull I got from a medical school auction years ago, and I use it as a memento mori, as a reminder that all is vanity. I did not know that you could go to a medical auction and purchase human body parts. That is so interesting and something I will need to remember for later. <laughs> I love to imagine the person who donated their body to science thinking it was going to be used for like the advancement of the medical research or something crazy like that. And instead their skull ends up on Rick Owens' desk next to two pistols and an ashtray to serve as a reminder to the multi-millionaire that he's going to die someday. I hope that when I die, Dave Grohl gets my femurs so that at my funeral he can bang out my hero on the drums. They are so uncomfortable. They're hard. The angle of the back, it's, you have to sit so upright. So it feels like a church pew, a little bit punishing. I rarely sit in them, but I love them so much. This man is a glutton for punishment, as my grandma would say. I love the idea of having an entire room that you can't use because you've designed it to be so uncomfortable that you can't sit in a chair for more than five minutes. Very progressive, very avant-garde. He really walks the walk. One of my favorite things that I do like to wear, even though I don't wear very many things, is this robe. I've indulged myself with this from my spring, summer. Wait, I actually have one of these. Oh my God, I actually have one of these alone. Like, am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. Am I wrong? I have the whole look. It is regal and cozy on a winter morning when I'm wandering around having coffee on the terrace. Okay, Rick, we're kind of on a first name basis now. I'm gonna put the regalness and the coziness of the graduation gown to the test on the streets of New York City. Let's go. No, 
I don't often drink coffee, but if I do, I like something that's not too sweet. So the oat milk cold brew is the perfect drink. Okay, Vogue, I think that proves that this is an extremely regal and cozy gown to wear out. Now, back to the video. But my favorite object is this one. I was working with a dealer in New York who would send me images of sarcophaguses that were up for auction. And they were always a little bit too colorful and they always kind of looked a little fake to me. Oh my God, the balls on this guy to say the ancient tradition of painting gods and goddesses on coffins is fake looking because it's not postmodern minimalism is absolutely scrumptious. Ooh, yum, 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 I'm eating that up. You just can't fake this confidence. I am curious if there is an ethical way to source a sarcophagus. You know how museums are infamous for stealing artifacts? Like who is your sarcophagus guy? I think this is a red herring and this is actually where he sleeps. Just tell me, tell me this doesn't feel right. Space in this building became available a few years ago and we entered into an agreement to collaborate with the family that was running it and to turn it into an Owens Court bar. <gasps> oh my God. Okay, I figured it out. I know, I keep getting this feeling of like, recognizing him, of thinking he looks like someone. And I know who it is. He looks like Lurch from the Adams Family. And the pièce de résistance of this face is this mural by my daughter, Scarlet Rouge. Wait, hold on. His daughter's name is Scarlet Rouge? Besides that literally meaning red blush, which is such a unique name, uh, it sounds so similar to Charlotte Russe, and I don't know if there's any affiliation, any relation, but if there is, thank you so much, girl. I have a pair of leggings from there that lasted me since I was 14. I just finally blew out the crotch after over 10 years, so RIP, thank you so much, girl. And I asked Scarlett, my daughter, to reference it in these murals that she did for the showroom for that collection. Give a certain energy to this space. I, I, I don't like a lot of decoration, but if you're gonna do a decoration, I want it to be as extravagant and as dramatic and as extreme as possible. And I think that's what this is. Like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to be a bitch here, you know? It, it's a lovely space. I love the mural, but the most extravagant, the most dramatic, the most extreme possible, I'm like, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, I'm like, what? Okay, like what? Okay, fine, I'm fine, I know, whatever. For several years, I have been collecting these Onagadori rooster feathers. They were bred originally in 17th century Japan. My father had a library in the basement. This is so odd, but he does make it look like the most pleasant fidget toy imaginable. It would totally satisfy my braiding hair fantasy. I just want to yank on it. Okay, wow, that was absolutely incredible. I am not trying to be mean here. He seems like a nice enough guy, but he also seems like the kind of guy who would chew up a plate of surf and turf and baby bird it into his wife's mouth because it makes him feel in touch with his paleolithic side. Someone in the comments said, I can't get over how immaculately he can state what he is thinking. How do I achieve this amount of mind clarity? And I think he's referring to something like this. It's kind of severe and a little bit maudlin, a little bit melancholy, but also vaguely spiritual. And I just think the best thing I can say to that is this. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, bye bye.